Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Holy Cross Church. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. This Mass is being offered for all living and deceased mothers of Holy Cross and St. Mary's Easy Parishes. Our entrance hymn can be found in the music issue, number 301, The God of All Grace. Please stand.
that the human flock may, co may reach where the great shepherd has gone, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
which no one could count. From every nation, race, people, and time, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship Him day and night in His temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sadly, times we hear stories of 
he lost his heart. Or she lost her heart. When we think of our mothers, we think of all the love and devotion that they dedicated to us. All the heart that went into that. Of their living out the finest of their God-given vocations. Motherhood. The precious gift of life which was bestowed upon us. Sometimes we are very grateful for the lives that we have. Sometimes we don't appreciate it enough. And in other times we look at it with a very dark attitude. The gift of life, the gift of heart, has been given to each of us <clears throat> by our mothers. Who could not think of the great sacrifices that our moms made for us? We also celebrate, as I said, Good Shepherd Sunday, where Jesus says, I am a good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Shepherding could be a job, but once again, it's a vocation from God. Sheep are very fickle creatures. They're very shy. They're very awkward. They can be very stubborn. And in the plightest of ways, they can also be very dumb. They need someone to lead them. They need someone to protect them. Heck, they won't even drink out of a moving stream. So when we say the 23rd Psalm about restful waters, the pool of water has to be quiet, or else the sheep won't drink out of it. Or the shepherd might take his hands and fill it with water and bring it up to the sheep's mouth. The shepherd puts his whole heart into protecting his sheep. And being shepherds so prevalent at the time of Jesus, he knows that example very well. And he announces to us that he is the good shepherd that he is the one who is going to lead us through the dark valley and the veil of tears and through all the pitfalls. And he will lead us and protect us and yes, even make sacrifices for us. So there's a great commonality between mothers and shepherds. Just as a shepherd watches his flock, a mother watchfully protects her children. We talked and mentioned at the beginning about heart, and it takes a lot of heart, a lot of conviction. You know, sometimes we all get tired, we get sick, we want to give up, we want to quit. But a good mom will always persevere. A good shepherd will always persevere. And certainly we know that Jesus on the cross gave up every ounce of his life to protect us. They have heart. And so on this Good Shepherd Sunday, in addition to thinking about Jesus, we are also thinking about those who he asks to help shepherd us today. We mentioned one group already, our mothers and our fathers, but 
on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we also reflect upon our priests. And we pray that they may have the heart of a shepherd, the heart of a good priest, that is willing to make sacrifices, is full of love and compassion for his earthly flock, his church. Sometimes it's not an easy thing, but for the most part, a priest that prays and a priest with heart will always persevere, just like the mothers in Jesus. We live in a day and age, though, where no one is ever satisfied with anything. We can't please anybody. A very difficult position to be in. People are critical. We're critical of religion, we're critical of motherhood, we're critical of priests, we're critical of anybody that puts his heart and his soul into his job. Why are you working so hard? You're making it tough on me. It's easy for us to focus on the bad ones and those that like to take the easy way out. But on this Good Shepherd Sunday, through the intercession of Mary, Mother of all priests, we bring all our needs, the needs for our families, the needs for those who created us out of love, our mothers and our fathers, especially our mothers who celebrate this day, we pray for our priests. And we ask the Lord to be with them guide them, to shelter them, to care for them, but most especially that they remain holy and they remain prayerful. In past times, we have been and we have heard all the criticisms of priests. It's very easy to pick on somebody. Some of us can even rattle off the names of priests who we think are bad. I don't know why the bad ones always seem to get the attention. We seldom figure out or call to or pray for those who give of themselves. Let's pray for our mothers. Let's pray for our priests. Through Mary, Mother of the Church.
as wandering sheep who call out to the shepherd for guidance and protection. Let us bring our let us bring our needs and petitions to the Lord who never abandons us. For the church, may God strengthen all who have been anointed for leaders and to share in the one baptism we profess. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the Lord inspire them to generosity and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For parents who lack adequate resources to provide for their children's needs, may they be blessed with the presence of those who have been helped to ease their burdens. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For teachers and catechists in this faith community, may God be their guide as they share the gospel message with joy and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who have died, may the Lord lovingly welcome them into the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And at this time, please include your own special intention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, thank you for listening to our prayers each day. We ask you to please grant us what we ask according to your will. For your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
also our spiritual drink. Friend, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our ending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, and all times to claim you, O oh Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her chaste spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, the St. Helen, St. John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Just a couple announcements before we part tonight. Just a reminder once again that uh, we move the mass time on Tuesday evening to 6 p.m. And then after mass, about 6.30, will be confessions and prayer time before the Blessed Sacrament. And then we'll have benediction at 7. Our grass cutting season for the year is beginning. Cemeteries are very difficult for us to try and maintain. And so we ask your cooperation that as we prepare to get ready for Memorial Day, that if you have Christmas decorations or any other things that are left up there, if you please, if you consider them important, remove them. Uh, you know, please realize that our grass cutters, if you have stuff all over your grave. They have to get off of the tractor, pick everything up, move it, and then get back and put it back on again. And that's, that's labor intensive. And that, why you might say, is a part of their job. In the long run, that hurts us because that means they're cutting grass a lot longer and we're paying them more. So I don't want to begrudge anybody a job, but, you know, sometimes some of the stuff on the graves gets to be a little bit, a little bit much. So we ask you please to clear the graves, to get ready for grass cutting, to make it easier for them. The diocesan pilgrimage to celebrate Corpus Christi is coming up on June 19th. We've talked about that enough, but I just want this will be the last pulpit announcement we're going to make about it. But please, if you would like to go, please inform the rectory so that we can travel together and, and work out arrangements. Growing up here in Schuylkill County, especially as a boy in Plotsville, I used to love to be able to walk Center Street. I know some of you work there, some of you are familiar with it. But as a boy back in the 60s and the early 70s, all the stores, remember Pomeroy's with their Christmas display and Sears and What's His Candy and there were all these great stores. And then the malls came and the malls put them out of business. And now the internet is putting the malls out of business. And a lot of people get upset when things begin to close, but they don't necessarily realize that the little business, the little bit of business that you give in your own community supports us, it supports our town, it supports those people who are offering the services to us, it supports the fact that our towns will survive. But if we don't support our organizations and our businesses, they're doomed to fail. So I would ask you, please, to support our local business people, some of them who are parishioners of our parish, to support them in the best way you possibly can. You know, so many people drive up to Wilkes-Barre for groceries and they don't have to. For everything that comes out of the catalog because Amazon is easy. I think it's only a matter of justice and a matter of fairness that we support our business people. Because in the long run, by us supporting them, they help us too. We are uh, going to try something different. We're going to maybe do it maybe four times a year. But as you know, Memorial Day is coming up. And uh, I will take responsibility for it only because if it falls through, it's my fault. If it's a win, it was a great move by the parish. But we're going to chance off, you know, what's better when we begin Memorial Day to be able to have steak on the grill. So we have $5 chances to be able to win $150 worth of steaks, and we're going to chance off two of those packages. So I would ask that you please uh, consider buying a ticket. As you know, to go to the store and buy a steak, you're not going to pay five bucks worth of steak. So I would ask you please to support the ticket, encourage some of your friends and neighbors and other people 
maybe the buy the ticket to help keep this parish alive and financially well. And I also would like to thank the Bullens who were going to put the meat packages together for us. Uh, and I made it very clear to them this is not a donation on their part, that we want to be able to support them too. And that goes for all of the business people here in town. I don't hope for donations, I want to support them, and they should. Um, I want to thank Mike Sadinsky. Um, it came to, came to my attention, me personally, not my attention, but Holy Week took an awful lot out of me trying to do everything by myself, and I need help. And we need to be able to, once again, if we are a parish family, we need to be able to work together better. We need to do more together as a parish family. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just not a bunch of individuals doing their own thing. We need to do it as a parish family. But Michael has agreed to help me on Saturday to set up for Mass so that if I'm delayed, I don't have to worry about coming in here and trying to set up things. So I appreciate him. And if there's other people that would like to help, we'd be happy to train you. And it would certainly be a great benefit for us. And as I said, on those times when Mike can't be here, it would be a backup. So we'd ask for that help. Um, the lovely lady impressed in the service is Sabrina McLaughlin. Sabrina was a parishioner of mine for many years. Uh, she is also involved with the love of my life, Jesuit spirituality. She's in a program in the spirituality of St. Ignatius. And uh, this was the first time she's ever served. Jesuits are brilliant people, but they're lousy with celebrating Mass. So we always used to tell the joke that as clueless as a Jesuit during Holy Week, they don't the slightest idea what's going on. But she did a great job, and I want to thank her for that. Uh, she's up here visiting. Uh, she tells me that she has a boyfriend back in the county. Uh, so, uh, you know, so I think that's probably the reason why. So, uh, but anyway, I just want to thank you for all you do. I want to thank you all for being such wonderful parishioners. And I'm talking way too much because I know you all want to go home. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle.